welcome. Thank you very much for joining us this evening. I'm Dave from Schoharie Crossing. You're the audience. And uh, like I often say, I'm pretty excited about this one. And you should be too. We are kicking off our New York State History Month program series this evening with what will prove to be a very interesting and um, thought provoking program. And we are welcoming Kenneth Jones, who is the town of Esperance historian and has been a longstanding board member of the Esperance Historical Museum and Historical Society, of which he is currently the president. Though semi retired, after a long career within the Institutional Services and Procurement Department of the University at Albany, where he has recently re-retired from a position as a research associate, Kenneth can trace his passion back and fascination for history to when he was a young boy listening to the stories of the old timers around town. And we are very much looking forward to hearing Ken's research, so please welcome Kenneth Jones. Okay, thank you. Um, I would just say, um, that uh, this is based on uh, two typewritten poems that I read many years ago in our museum collection. Um, and uh, we're gonna start the program um, based on that. And we're gonna cover a lot of things I discovered when I was researching uh, those two poems. Um, we've got a request, um, David, for an annotation. Um, is that something you normally allow? We can, uh, it, there was a request that came in for that. Yeah, I've got an annotation request here. Um, I don't I, know what I, that does or. It, if you wanna hit deny on that for right now, um, uh, anybody that wants to put in that request can try to send that over to me and I'll, I'll see what I can do with it. Okay, I don't know what it means, okay. okay. All right, so with the ballads of the Scary Creek Drownings, um, these two poems were typewritten um, and I read them over and they're quite interesting. Um, they told the story of an 1820s event um, near Fort Hunter. And when I got those uh, two poems, I just kind of made a mental note of it. And years later, I was, um, when eBay came around, I was looking at eBay and all of a sudden this broadside pops up and the title is Two Poems by J and A. And I looked at that broadside and I thought, wow, that that seems like the same poems that I saw in our museum, which were typed transcripts of this. Um, so I tried to buy it on eBay and lost out. And just recently, another one that was in worse shape and I thought it might get a little cheaper came up and I lost out on that one as well. And I thought, well, if I'm ever gonna get one, I'll have to check the state museum um, library and see what they have. And they actually had two versions, um, I say two versions, they had two copies of the poem, one in better condition than the other, but I was able to acquire them. And um, I'll share that um, with you later. Um, now we're talking about uh, the Schoharie Creek. Um, as most of you know, the Schoharie Creek reaches the Mohawk River um, at Fort Hunter, and that's where the um, interchange with the Erie Canal was, and we have um, the scary crossing that we're now familiar with, but that wasn't always the way um, it was. This particular picture shows a feeder dam um, over the scary creek where they had um, water uh, coming into the, um, the canal system. This photograph, of course, is of some, was around 1900. Uh, so what we're gonna look at is uh, a much earlier version um, of this system where the scary creek um, is being a dam to allow for um, boats to be uh, put through the, the canal. Um, by 1822, north of the Newkirk property, uh, the Erie Canal had been completed with a dam creating a pool in the Scary Creek, allowing canal boats to pass through and acting as a feeder to the canal itself. Between 1822 and 29, a rope ferry was used to draw boats across the Scary Creek. Here we have a depiction of a rope ferry uh, going across a river. And if you notice, that's what you see there is a rope going um, across the river. A bridge was built in 1829 to allow um, tow boats to go through the area um, with a towpath 
and that was used until 1845 when the stone aqueduct was opened uh, for business. The Newkirks were not new to the area. They'd been living here uh, sometime previous to the Revolutionary War. In fact, uh, they're in New York State by the 1600s. And the Newkirks we're going to talk about today um, and these stories were all descendants of Garrett and Anna Vischer Newkirk who were married in Albany in 1718. A great grandson of Garrett named Abraham, whose father was also named Abraham, if you're doing genealogy, just makes it challenging. Um, this Abraham we're going to talk about was baptized in 1796 and would later live in what became the town of Glen. Abraham Newkirk Jr.'s brother-in-law, his name was John Littlejohn. Um, nothing like a confusing name. Um, he had the contract to build the dam across the Scary Creek at Fort Hunter uh, to form a slack pool for the canal boats to safely uh, cross the Scary. And he was also the first ferry and lock operator at the Erie Canal Lock at Fort Hunter. Here we see on this map a view of the Scary Creek that shows it's going up from uh, Schoharie County into Montgomery County through Charleston, uh, through Florida. You'll see Mill Point um, and the Scary Creek all the way up to Fort Hunter um, and where the Erie Canal uh, goes through. And keep in mind, um, the Erie Canal went through uh, changes over the years, was uh, enlarged. Um, the canal that we're looking at is gonna be the first canal um, that they had in the 1820s. Here's a diagram. I think I might have stole this from the uh, uh, the site here at the um, Scary Crossing, but it gives you an idea um, where it says Clinton's Ditch. This is what we're talking about uh, during the first um, stories I'll be telling you. And um, basically, they had a, a dam, and here you see um, a rope ferry um, where that went across. And we're going to talk about that one, I believe, next. So basically, um, Abraham Newkirk Jr. on Thursday, March 29th, 1827, which is before we noted the bridge was built, um, Abraham and John Greenman and a man named Mr. Fish attempted to cross a scary creek in a skiff at the ferry at Fort Hunter. Here we have a picture of an old rowboat that's uh, similar to what they probably would have been in. Um, the crossing was made during a flood. Now, if any of you have been on the Scary Creek, you know you're probably trying to avoid it during flood stage, but they decided to cross it. And unfortunately, the boat upset. Uh, Mr. Greenman and Mr. Fish immediately sunk in the flood in the presence of Greenman's wife and children and a great number of spectators and were not seen to rise. Mr. Newkirk, though, arose, swam about 40 yacht rods, and I think a rod is about three feet, and went over the dam just below the ferry. He was followed by his wife on the bank until he arrived on a shoal, for which he had evidently directed his course. On it, he raised himself half out of the water, beckoned to his wife, was swept off, sunk, and see no more. The next day, a diligent search was done and mention was made that by noon, neither Mr. Greenman nor Mr. Fish's body had been discovered. Bad news travels fast, and it was not long before the story showed up in newspapers in Vermont and Long Island. No mention was made of what upset the boat. The only clue is the word flood um, used in the sentence. It was not uncommon for rope ferries to be a hazard to those boating and not realizing there was a rope across the water. And as we look back at the picture of the rope ferry, there again, you see the rope going across the water. And you can imagine if you weren't prepared for it, what danger that could um, uh, cause um, of you and your boat going across into the creek. Now, um, when they had um, the uh, rope ferries, Reverend Nicholas Hill, um, who was operating a ferry um, at Port Jackson, which is where the Mohawk River uh, crosses into Amsterdam. Um, he had a rope ferry there. And unfortunately, at about this time, um, there was an accident and a man um, was knocked over and, and injured uh, by uh, Mr. Hill's uh, ferry rope and sued 
uh, Reverend Hill for damages. At this same ferry, about 50 years later in 1872 at Port Jackson, uh, some prominent attorneys, John Johnson I. Snell and Culver Patterson, engaged a Michael Turner to row them across the Mohawk River. Their boat met the ferry rope and all three were thrown into the water and drowned. Now we have to remember that these are occurring, of course, when the weather was cold and the water would have been uh, very chilly and you would have a short time to um, extricate yourself plus the, um, the rapidity of the water. And there are a lot of other things that um, the Scary Creek has to offer, such as whirlpools that uh, have claimed many lives, which are not obvious in themselves. This is the tombstone uh, for Abraham Newkirk in the uh, Newkirk Cemetery on the corner of Fort Hunter Road and 5S is currently protected by a nice fence, but you can barely make out anything. I couldn't even tell it was writing on this particular stone. This, I, this photo I borrowed uh, from Thomas Doon who loaded this up on Find a Grave and said he, he washed it down with water um, and scrubbed it and then took uh, this photograph and you can see it says Abraham uh, Newkirk and he was drowned um, March 29th, 1827. Now, the next year is 1828, and we're going to be talking about William Newkirk this time. He's a grandson of Garrett and Anna Newkirk, and he was born around 1765. And he was going to Fultonville to visit his sister, and there he met an itinerant weaver. Here we see an itinerant weaver. Um, this one happens to be taken from the Cooperstown uh, Farmers Museum, but the males were weavers and, um, you know, would set up their loom in your house and uh, create uh, whatever textiles you needed and then uh, take their machinery down and go to the next house. Here we have a picture that shows where the Newkirks lived. Um, this is um, off of what is currently Fort Hunter Road and this is Newkirk Road. And as you can see, uh, the road eventually leads um, to uh, the Schoharie Creek. Um, and all of these Newkirks um, had lived there for a period of time and were very familiar with um, the Scoheri Creek having lived alongside of it for generations. So um, he decided to hire Mr. Chase and Chase agreed to go with William uh, to his home on the east bank of the Scary Creek to do weaving. This was on January 28th, so the travel was by sleigh. In addition to Mr. Chase, the party included William Newkirk's daughter, her cousins Nancy, the daughter of John Newkirk and Nellie of the town of Florida, and Maria Marlette, the daughter of the widow Rachel and her late husband Giles of Rotterdam. They left Fultonville and headed home to Fort Hunter. William drove the span of horses and attempted to cross the frozen creek a short distance above the canal opposite the Putnam homestead. The Newkirk home was on the east bank of the Scary Creek, and there was a fording place where travelers often crossed. The Scary Creek flows north to the Mohawk River at this place. Keeping in mind that fording was a, a common way of crossing the creek before bridges were built, and especially if you're trying to avoid a toll bridge, um, there were also ferries on the Scary Creek, um, one in Sloansville that you had to pay a fee to use, so uh, people would look at alternate ways of crossing the creek to avoid you know, paying those tolls. The sun was about an hour high when they were about to cross the creek, probably about an hour after sunrise. As they attempted to cross the frozen scary creek, the horses and sleigh broke through the ice. A cry was heard from Newkirk's house. They ran and found nothing but the tracks upon the ice. They saw that they were drowned. The next day they cut the ice and searched for the bodies. Here's uh, the Newkirk Road, and this is one of the last farms that's still standing um, on Newkirk Road. And they would have been leaving from this farm or one further towards the creek. And a neighbor that I ran into when I was taking these pictures said that beyond this field um, was the fording place uh, that they would have crossed um, the Schoharie Creek. 
Now here's Fultonville and Fort Hunter to give you an idea of the distance uh, they left um, down probably closer to where the word Schoharie is um, and went to Fultonville, which is only, I think, six or eight miles and then uh, returned. The next day, as I said, they cut the ice and searched for the bodies. The news of the accident quickly spread in the neighborhood. Finally, the three young ladies were found. Their colored cheeks made it appear that life was still present. The team of horses were also found that day. The neighbors prepared the girls' bodies for their funeral and a, no and a mournful funeral was held for the three youthful cousins. They were buried in a common grave. The cemetery, now lost, was on the Henry Rutter farm on a road on the east bank of the Scary Creek where the old Newkirk Ford crossed the creek. Nine days later, the body of Mr. Chase was found and not having any family uh, nearby, um, the body was prepared by uh, William Newkirk's um, neighbors. It would be another 48 days after the drowning that William Newkirk's body was found near Van Dorn's Mills. The tragedy was circulated among the Eastern States newspapers. Two poets named A and J wrote ballads of the Scary Creek drownings published as a broadside complete with five coffins and warning to others of the unknown timing but certainty of death. May you prepare to follow too, how soon you do not know. Uh, this is a copy of the um, broadside from the state archives and I'll try and read this to you. These are two different poems, you know, ballads were a common thing in those days, especially they were written when there were tragic events, you know, uh, executions or hanging ballads or all kinds of different ballads. And this was a, a mourning ballad here for the, um, the, the, the uh, drownings in the creek. And there were two different people that wrote these poems. Um, one evidently had initial A, and the second one is by Miss J.L., um, but they did not give any more than that on the people that were the authors of these two ballads. We'll start off with the first one. Come all ye people, grave and gay, come view this solemn sight. Five persons' souls are called away from earth have took their flight. On January 26, 828, mysterious providence did fix their everlasting state. William Newkirk and his daughter were both of Florida, besides near Scoharry Water, residing near Scary Water, a few rods, we may say. Nancy, their cousin, also dwelt near them in Florida, and to their house the day she went, a visit for to pay. Mariah, a cousin to them all, did live in Rotterdam, and she upon her friends did call to spend some time with them. On this sad day, as you must know, all met at William's house, and to his sisters then did go, the creek they had to cross. A stranger by the name of Chase, it seems, was weaving there. He had just come into the place, and him they wished to hire. So when the time had passed away and they were going home, they took the stranger in their sleigh, for he'd agreed to come. Thus were riding brisk and gay, the distance being small. But oh, alas, the ice gave way, which fatal proved to all. Thus in a moment they were hurled into eternity to enter on the unseen world how great their change must be. A cry was heard from New Kirk's house. They ran, but nothing found. But by the tracks upon the ice, they saw that they were drowned. Next day, they searched and cut the ice. The three young ladies found near in the melancholy place where they so late were drowned. A mournful funeral they did have, these three young ladies fair all buried in one common grave, most solemn to declare. It was not until nine days were o'er, the corpse of Chase was found, and Newkirk, 47 more, after they were drowned. And now in silence, 
all do rest beneath the dusky tomb until with saints and angels blessed their righteous judge shall come. He shall reward them as they spent their moments here below. And if they truly did repent to glory, they shall go. But may their friends resign be to God's most holy will, knowing the glorious deity performing all things well. May you prepare to follow too, how soon you do not know, then when you bid the world adieu, to glory you may go. The second one um, is the ballad by Miss J.L. Hearken ye people, far and near, a lamentation you shall hear, an incident took place of late, a solemn thing I now will state. William Newkirk and daughter fair, to other girls, as we do here, one morning left their fireside with pleasure a few miles to ride. A laboring man they wished to hire to bring the loom and shuttle for to spring, and Chase with their request complied and took a seat with them to ride. These five, now seated in their sleigh, cheerfully riding on their way, and to their dwelling soon draw nigh the sun about an hour high. Scoheri stream they sought to cross, and knowing, not knowing, they would suffer loss. The ice gave way and down they went, and soon their life and breath were spent. What human heart but will relent to think the agonies they felt when grasped in death's cold icy hand, receding to that unknown land? What tongue can tell the scenes of woe and heartfelt sighs and tears that flow from those who now survive to part with friends and closely, so closely joined in heart. Advanced in life were two of these, but now in death, their eyes are closed. These three The other three, just in their bloom, their morning sun has set at noon. The next day after they were drowned, the three young ladies, they were found. Their cheeks were blushing, blooming, fresh and fair, still looking as, as, as if the life were there. Their spirits gone, their bodies dead, the dull filled news it, quick, news it quickly spread. And soon the neighborhood will, will hear the ladies for the grave prepare. The grave it was capacious made for those three girls were in it laid. To rest till Christ shall bid them there to meet their doom or take them home. The other two still in the deep and friends around do mourn and weep. But nine days after this, took place, they found the corpse of Mr. Chase. He was a foreigner, we hear. He had no friends residing near. The neighbors did with mourning care his body for the grave prepare. The four were laid beneath the sod some weeks before New Kirk was found. They liked to look for him in vain, for down the stream he washed a main. Ye relatives and mourners dear, a solemn invitation here. Some consolation would I give if you are willing to receive. Seeing you now are left alone, your friends are gone to worlds unknown. Be reconciled and trust in God, nor murmur at his chastening rod. Remember you are mortals too, and soon must bid this world adieu. For providence hath many ways to bring us mortals to our graves. Though often health and in our prime, we may be hurried out of time. Life is uncertain, death is sure. Nothing on earth can life secure. This you've experienced and do know. There's nothing in this world below can save 
when in a dying hour, the art of human, the art of human art or power. Both old and young, I say awake, to righteousness your sins forsake. Turn to the Lord and seek his face and taste the riches of his grace. So those were the two ballads and you can imagine the, um, the, the cadence and um, uh, what this uh, kind of thing would have done to people at that time. This particular event uh, was covered in all kinds of newspapers um, all over. Um, historian Melvin Lethbridge wrote that this place, the New Kirk Ford, was noted for years as the site of this tragedy. He also explains that this Ford was the scene of another tragedy some years later when John Horton visited his son John and Thomas in Fultonville. After a short visit, he was going to visit friends on the east bank of the Scary Creek and was advised by his son to cross a few miles away from the Ford. But Mr. Horton was determined, and he with his horse and cutter fell through the ice. When the ice went out, they dragged the creek, and after relocating the dragging operation to above the ford, located his body. Melvin explained that the ford bordered a deep place in the Scary Creek on the upper side with quite an eddy or whirlpool, and Mr. Horton was caught and carried into the whirlpool. When I was studying this uh, information and doing research on the Newkirk family, I found another story, this one not about a flood um, or the Scary Creek, but about that locality and about the Newkirk family. It was another tragedy a few years later that befell the Newkirk family around 1830. A tin peddler named Robert Blair from Fulton County was leaving Fort Hunter after bartering for among other things, a lot of sheepskin, which were tied to the back of his wagon. While ascending a hill, a practical joker standing nearby suggested to John Newkirk that he cut the rope on the peddler's wagon to see the pelts scatter. John thought this a good joke and took out his knife and jumped unseen by the driver to the back of his wagon. He attempted to quickly jump on and sever the rope, but instead cut an artery on his left arm. In a short time, he bled to death long before the doctor arrived. Almost 50 years had passed when another disaster plagued the Newkirk family. Isaac Newkirk, uh, born 1811, whose uh, place we had seen previously in the map, was a great grandson of Garrett and Anna Newkirk and lived close to the Scary Creek near the Fort Hunter. His home was noted in the, in the 1868 Stranahan and Nicholas map of the town of Florida. His first wife was Katie M and his second wife was Christina, born around 1832. On a Sunday morning, June 4th, 1876, Christina, sometimes referred to as Catherine in contemporary news accounts, and her daughter, age either nine or 12, went on foot to Van Dorn's Mills. And here we see we have a point here going to Van Dorn's Mills. Now, a lot of the mills, um, because of the volatility of the Scary Creek, uh, mills were not built usually directly on the creek unless they had a very large mill and had a lot of, of um, you know, powerful water wheels and water control. So they built them on what they called power ditches. So this, uh, the lines that you see here with the arrow, um, basically what happened is they'd have a dam on the creek, the water would go through a power ditch into the mill, and then it would exit back out into the creek. And um, they could control the water in the power ditch so it wouldn't damage um, their mills. So they went across to Van Dorn's Mills to visit her son, Alonzo Wicks. During the journey, they waded across a scary creek as Mrs. Newkirk had done many times before. For at that place, the stream is broad and shallow, probably describing the Newkirk Ford. Having finished their visit, the mother and child started for home around two o'clock in the afternoon. When they reached the creek, it was about three feet higher than when they left in the morning. Reports stated that it was supposed that during the interval, of between crossings, the stream was raised by the previous rain. But apprehending no danger, with no one in sight to give assistance in case it might be needed, the mother started across, probably carrying the child or leading her by the hand. It was supposed that the child in some way escaped from her grasp and that while endeavoring, endeavoring to save her, both were drowned. 
The body of Mrs. Newkirk was seen near the old ferry house at Fort Hunter by two boys named Mickle around four o'clock that same afternoon, floating on the water, being held up by the clothes. William Fisher pulled it ashore. At that time, the body of the child had not been found. A watch was kept at the dam near Fort Hunter to keep the body from going over it. Mrs. Newkirk was 44 years old and she was the aunt of Mrs. Schuyler DeForest of Amsterdam. Coroner Alonzo Putnam, accompanied by Dr. Robb, uh, were called and went to the site on the 5th for the purpose of holding an inquest, the coroner's inquest. Monday afternoon, a verdict of accidental drowning was rendered by the jury. The Newkirk's family scenes of lamentations makes apparent that even those with intimate knowledge of Scary Creek could be caught off guard and become a victim of its awesome power. Here we see a picture of the powerhouse of the Scary Falls and the Mill Point Power Project. They're going to generate electricity here around the turn of the century uh, and sell it to Amsterdam. Um, I had an elderly neighbor, uh, Walt Easton, and um, he told me that they were warned that high water was coming um, so that they could prepare. And the gentlemen working on the project were not familiar with how rambunctious the Scary Creek gets during a flood and said, we'll stop it with a plank. Um, and obviously a plank didn't help and the uh, mill was severely damaged by high water. And you probably have not heard of this power plant because it had a very short lifespan. Even modern engineers have underestimated the destructive capacity of the Scary Creek at flood stage. The New York State Thruway constructed a bridge in the early 50s crossing the Scary about 1.1 miles south of its confluence with the Mohawk River. On April 5, 1987, a span of this New York State Thruway bridge at Fort Hunter collapsed during the flood and 10 people were killed when their automobiles fell into, creek, into the creek bed. This was recorded as the worst tragedy ever experienced by the New York State Thruway Authority. Here we see a map that shows you about where the, uh, the area was that's under construction where the bridge collapsed. And the westbound traffic we notice uh, from this newspaper clipping is all going over um, uh, Route 20. And um, this is the bridge at Esperance at Route 20. Uh, it was built in 1930. It was older than the bridge that collapsed. Um, and this bridge um, was a scene of many accidents over the years, uh, especially a lot of them smashed into a house at the other end of the, of the bridge um, because they'd lose their brakes coming down the hill or their um, part of their transmission or their powertrain would fall off and that would be, um, they'd be hurtling down into the village. Here we see an inspection going on. Uh, they're bringing people in to see um, what's going on uh, with the Esperance Bridge since it's gonna hold all the Western traffic of the New York State Thruway. Um, there was also mention uh, of the design that it was, that it underestimated the potential for flooding in the Scary Creek Basin. So basically the people that designed the bridge in 1950 underestimated the potential for flooding. Um, in the Scary Creek Basin. Here we see a picture of the Mill Point Bridge. Um, there was also mentions of turbulent water um, when there was flooding. And, and we saw that with the whirlpools and all the things that happened to the people um, near the Newkirk Ford um, in high water situations where the, um, it appeared that the turbulent water had, had dragged people um, away from the Ford and into the deep water. Less than a week after the bridge collapsed on the New York State Thruway, on April 11th, the Mill Point Bridge on Route 161 collapsed. Here we see Governor Cuomo uh, standing in the creek bed looking disgusted. Um, but luckily the Mill Point Bridge had already been closed to traffic, so no one was uh, killed when this was, um, when this collapsed. And of course we all know, or those that live in the area know, and uh, just 10 years ago, um, there was the major flooding of the Scary Creek and there's currently um, a display. It's been down at the Burtonville River Center. It's gonna be at the Stone Fort uh, commemorating the 10th year of, the, of that flood. So at this time, I'll turn the program back over to our host, uh, David, with the Scary Crossing historic site.
Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Katie Shoup. Um, I also work at Sky Crossing. Uh, Dave's internet um, just went out, <laughs> but um, no, he's reconnecting. Um, but I thought it was an interesting um, talk. The ballads had me very intently listening. Yes, I was reading from an old original, so it doesn't, um, it takes a bit of, of uh, eye strain to read it. <laughs> well, uh, David seems to still have um, connection issues. Um, Ken, um, are you um, finished with your talk? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, just waiting for any questions okay. anybody had. That's all. Okay. Um, does anyone uh, have any um, final questions to ask? Um, put them in the chat. Uh, wait, maybe another minute, and then um, if not, then um, we'll end. Um, how many people are buried in the Newkirk Cemetery? Is it just the Newkirk family? Um, the Newkirk Cemetery that um, I went to has um, other families in it. It's um, if you go to find a grave and look up uh, Newkirk Cemetery, um, you'll find, I believe, most of the stones listed there, along with photographs of it. Unfortunately, the um, I was looking for the grave where the three girls were buried together. Um, that was in this um, other uh, Newkirk Cemetery, but I have not been able to locate that cemetery and I see that other, you know, historians before me have been trying to find it. I did go on that Newkirk Road and met a farmer there. Um, and I have a feeling that there are more homes. Uh, that dirt road is kind of, I've got a high clearance Jeep, so I was able to go quite a ways down that road, but it ends in a field. Eventually I stopped when it was starting to look really, uh, really bad. So I didn't want to end up getting stuck back there. Um, but I would, I would think that possibly somewhere um, near the creek uh, along the hedgerow, somewhere is maybe another cemetery. It would, it would actually depend on where um, this Mr. Rudder um, lived. And uh, I asked Kelly at the uh, Fonda archives if she had uh, anything on this Rudder farm. Um, it was there in 1941, according to what article I was reading at the time. Um, but where this Rudder farm actually is and the cemetery, I'm not sure. But the other one, the other Newkirk one that has um, Abraham that drowned in the earlier incident, that one's on the corner of Fort Hunter Road and 5S and is fenced in. It's near a new facility. I'm not sure if that's the new um, warehouse they're putting in there or whether it's part of... Um, you know, the beech nut plant, but whoever's factory that is, they went and put a nice, a chain link fence around the cemetery, but it's very hard to read the stones. Um, I could read Mrs. Newkirk's stone, but um, the one of uh, Newkirk Jr. Um, was laying at an angle and it was just smooth almost. I couldn't even make out anything, but this, this gentleman um, did that. So I would go to find a grave and look up uh, the Newkirk Cemetery in the town of Florida, you'll find that one, but you won't find the rudder one where I think um, the family, Mr. Chase and the three girls are buried. Any other questions? That's all I have. Okay, well, uh, thank you for um, doing this talk. I thought it was very um, interesting. Even like the title is what grabbed me to um, come in and listen. Um, uh, I'm glad you enjoyed it. <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you everyone else who um, came in to listen to our first History Month talk of 2021. Um, uh, thank you all for coming. Ken, thanks again. Um, thank you, Katie. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> no, and also, nice to meet you. <laughs> all right, now. Have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Have a great evening. <laughs>